What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor. Welcome to another video and today we're gonna to be talking about moving off and stopping. So moving off and stopping is really important. This comes right at the beginning of your driving lesson. So this video is gonna be really useful for you if you're doing revision, if you're just about to do this lesson, if you're about to start your driving lessons and you wanna know what's gonna come first, watch this video, hope you find it useful. So there's a couple of really important skills that you need to master to be able to do this safely and properly. Steering, we need to be able to steer into the road and accurately back in towards the curb. We need to be able to master the clutch and the brake to make sure that we can set off safely and smoothly and stop again safely and smoothly as well. And we also need to be able to master the mirrors to make sure that we're setting off when it's safe and there's no cars coming down the road when we pull away. When we went through the controls and instruments lesson, we learned a little bit about how the clutch works. It's two plates under the bonnet that connects the engine and the wheels, but to understand moving off and stopping, we need to go a little bit more in depth into how the clutch works and what exactly the biting point is. So really basic explanation, the clutch is two plates inside the engine that connect the engine and the wheels. When the clutch is down, the plates are like this and apart, the engine's not connected to the wheels. When the clutch is up, the plates come together and the engine and wheels are connected. What I mean by the biting point is the point where the clutch plates just start to come together and they just start touching and the engine's delivering a little bit of power from the engine to the wheels. The further up the clutch you come, the more the clutch plates are locked in and you'll be delivering more power through the engine to the wheels. So I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of how the clutch works and where the biting point is. Now to find the biting point, we need to be in first gear. And I'm not gonna set off, I'm just gonna find the biting point with the handbrake on. I should feel the car dip and the engine noise will change slightly, so listen out. Clutch is down, clutch is coming up. The first half of the clutch is literally just killing the dead space between the clutch plates. And there's nothing happening here until I come up to about halfway and the clutch plates just start touching. Which is just there. So the car's dipped slightly, I can feel the car trying to pull me forward, but because I've got the handbrake on, the car's not able to move just yet. If I come too high on the clutch, which I'm gonna do now, I can feel the car really start to dip and the engine noise is gonna to start to sound growly and angry. You can hear that there. So, finding the biting point will take a little bit of practice because it's very sensitive. It requires millimeter precision. So I'm gonna put my clutch back down again so the clutch plates are here and disconnected. The engine is not delivering power to the wheels right now. Let's do that again, I'm not gonna say anything. There, did you hear it? So when your instructor tells you to find the biting point, that's what they mean. So it's important to note as well, if your handbrake's not on very high, if you bring the clutch up past the biting point, then your car might start to move. Why is it doing that? So the brake works exactly the same as the handbrake does. If I press the brake all the way down, then the brakes are on very hard. But if I press the brake this much, the brakes aren't on very much. So the car still has the ability to move if it's pushed hard enough. Same with the handbrake. If the handbrake's on just a little bit, then in first gear, with the biting point too high, the car has the ability to move. You felt that, right? The car moved forward. If I put my handbrake on a lot higher, I can come past the biting point. The car's now surging forward. It's trying to push forward really hard. But because my brakes are run more sharply, then the car's not able to move. So it's important to familiarize yourself with where the biting point is, not come too high, and be really accurate and sensitive with your foot. If you're sitting at the biting point for too long, you might find that your foot is gradually increasing in height and then you're gonna start to hear the engine sound really angry. So get familiar with where your biting point is, keep your foot nice and level and try and keep your heel on the floor because it will help you balance. So let's run through all of that now in slow time. So P for prepare, clutch down into first gear and I'm gonna find the biting point. The engine noise has changed and the car has dipped. Applying gas, raising the needle up to about one and a half and holding it there, I'm not moving my feet for now. Then O for observation. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I can see the coast is clear. I'm gonna signal, disengage my handbrake, and the car's now moving. Raise the clutch up, and now I need to pull over. So, mirrors, signal, and drive into the left. Line up my car with the curb, clutch down, brake. And now I need to secure the car. So car goes into neutral and the handbrake goes on. Cancel the signal 
and relax. I need to make sure that the car's in neutral before I release my clutch pedal. Or, if I'm still in first gear, the car will try and move again. I need to make sure that my handbrake is on before I release the brake pedal. Otherwise, if I'm on a hill, then I'll just start rolling back or forwards down that hill. Now we're gonna do that again and run through it in quick time. Prepare, observe, and move. Okay, and now we're driving down the road. Let's pull over. Mirror, signal, slowing the car down. I've taken my foot off the gas so the car slows down. As I'm getting closer to the curb, I'm gonna press the clutch, start to gently apply the brake, and stop. Neutral, handbrake, cancel the signal, done. While you're driving down the road, it's important that you also understand how to pull over safely. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive off and then you're gonna need to move across back to the left of the road and pull over again. So how do we do that? Firstly, check the middle mirror. That's gonna give you a proper picture of what's happening behind. Remember this one's flat glass. The left mirror is convex and curved glass, which makes everything look smaller, therefore further away. It's great because it gives you a wider view of what's happening on the pavement, but remember it's gonna make the picture look smaller. So, middle mirror, left mirror, then signal. Really important to signal to let everybody know that you're pulling over. If there's a car behind you, they're gonna expect you to drive straight down the road. If you start moving into the left, they'll start thinking, why are they doing that? They might think there's a car on coming and you're giving way, so it's important to signal when you're pulling over. Then you can start moving into the left side of the road. Start to steer gently, don't steer too sharply because you'll discover that your angle of attack into the curb is way too sharp and it's really hard to get parallel and close to the curb when you're attacking the curb with a sharp angle. Then, once you've steered in and you're close to the curb, steer right again, that'll straighten up the car. It's not good enough just to straighten up your wheels because your car's still at an angle that's going into the curb, so we need to steer right as well. Then, once you're parallel, straighten up the wheels and stop. As you're getting close to the curb, you can start to put the clutch down and very gently press the brake. That will slow your speed down. The slower you're going, the more accurate you are with your steering. Now, let's talk about the right mirror. Do I need to check it? I don't think so. So if I'm moving to the left towards the curb and there's a motorbike overtaking me on the right, is that of any importance? No, let's be efficient with the mirrors and just check the ones that we need to check, steer, and then stop. Okay, next, you might find it a little bit difficult at first to be able to pull over next to the curb and be nice and tight because we're on the right side of the car, it's quite difficult to see and feel what's happening on the left side of the car so we can use a reference point. Don't use the mirrors because the mirrors are showing you what's happening at the back of the car and if you're approaching the curb at an angle, think where the back of the car is gonna be in relation to the front of the car. By the time the back of the car is close enough, the front of the car will have already hit the curb. So we need something that shows us what the front of the car is doing. What we can do is use a reference point. So on my car, we've got a light sensor just before the bonnet. If I have a look at the curb coming down, it cuts into the bonnet just where the light sensor is. So if I know that I'm nice and close to the curb now, that's gonna be my reference point. Everybody sees this in a different place, especially if your car's different, it will be in a different place. Try and find something that works on your car, something that doesn't move, especially like wipers, because they will be moving, especially if you're in the rain and trying to pull over, your wipers will be moving and you won't be able to get that reference point there. So light sensors work well. If not, you can get a little sticker, put it on the dashboard, exactly where you need to be pulling over. If you're practicing with friends, family, parents, that's a really good thing to do. Just get a little sticky bit of paper and put it exactly where the curb should be coming into your dashboard. So the curb cuts into the dashboard. When I'm driving along the road, the curb will be slightly further to the left. As I pull in towards the curb, the curb comes from left to right on the dashboard. As I'm pulling in, getting closer, the curb will hit that light sensor or your reference point. Then I steer right to straighten up the car and clutch down and brake to stop. Let me show you that in action. Clutch down, first gear, gas and bite, observation, signal, handbrake, steering into the road, now, I'm planning on pulling over, so mirror, signal, and then gently steering into the left. Once I'm happy, I'm gonna steer right to straighten up the car and straighten up the wheels, clutch down to slow down, braking gently, and handbrake neutral. Guys, that was moving off and stopping. I usually cover that as lesson two after controls and instruments. If you've done that before, great comment below tell me how it went with your instructor what was the differences that you did if you haven't done that before hopefully you found that really useful and you know more about what to expect on the moving off and stopping lesson when you're about to do it if there's anything else i can help you guys with comment below i'll read through all the comments and i'll be commenting back with you until the next video like comment and share this video with your friends anyone else that you know that's learning to drive help them out give them the love of this video catch you guys in the next one